thank you very much for, for having me on tonight. Um, I'm Julie Boschman. I'm a general manager for Green Jeans Farms. I started this company as a, a craft marijuana cooperative um, with a few farmers in Western Massachusetts with the intent of um, giving farmers access to being able to grow marijuana. And so um, you've seen this uh, site come before you before. Um, I believe it was approved previously for the use. Uh, we do have a, a slightly different setup um, this time around. Um, we've, we have a very good consultant who's walked the site. Um, and our intention really is to use the existing greenhouses um, and add two new greenhouses um, in the middle uh, northern section of the site. We're maintaining uh, the 500 foot setback from the school. Um, and we are asking the zoning board for a variance on the side setbacks just because it would be very difficult and costly for the landowner to have to shorten the greenhouses or change them. Um, the next change that uh, we've suggested is a metal barn for secure and discreet processing of the marijuana. And that just means the, the drying and trimming. And so that metal barn we're proposing would be inside the AR1 zone uh, where there were existing greenhouses that uh, as of recently were damaged due to snow and taken down. So the, um, just to, to reiterate what I put in our application, we are not proposing any supplemental lighting. Uh, we're sun grown inside existing plus two new greenhouses and a metal barn. Um, and you know we're hoping to have very minimal work on this site. Well, one of the things that um, I see that. Oh, sorry, Don, you just went on mute. That's weird. Okay, <laughs> one of the things I noticed is uh, you also on the fourth have a a zoning Board of Appeals meeting to try to get a variance for setbacks. And I think if we were to, to hear this, um, we would like to either condition the time of your, um, the date of your uh, public hearing for um, after that has been done and depending upon whether or not you got the, uh, the variance. So I would be happy to personally go ahead and set a, a time. And then if nothing happens on the 4th, we'll just uh, not actually issue the um, public notice. Does that work for other people on the board? That works for me. I think there's plenty of time to still advertise after the 4th. Right. I am curious, Julie, if you don't get that, that variance, what happens then? Can you adjust your site plan to accommodate the, the normal side setbacks or does that basically create something that would be unworkable? It creates hardship. So the way that um, the cooperative is structured is that both Green Jeans and the landowner um, contribute capital to the site. And also the, the landowner is going to continue to uh, grow other crops on the site. So it does create a hardship for him um, with the greenhouses. If they were to be shortened, um, he would lose money on other crops. Let's say um, the wholesale price of marijuana drops you know, significantly, and he wants to grow um, all tobacco and tomatoes there one year. I mean, sure. he would definitely be in a hardship. Okay, all right. Now, when we saw this site before, the proposal was eventually, because of setbacks, to move, to rotate the existing greenhouses in, in the AR1 area. And I think to move the, the other greenhouse, which is also a hoop house, isn't it? Um, yes, there's a, so if you're talking about the two greenhouses existing on the most Northern part portion, 
Um, mm -hmm. One is a, a hoop house in the middle and we're proposing to remove that um, just because it would be very difficult to get airflow through there. There's no fans or exhaust in there currently and it's a shorter greenhouse. So that's where we would propose to put a new one. But the one that's right on the lot line, on the westernmost lot line back on that, in AR2, mm -hmm. I think that proposal was to move that last time. Okay, I didn't see that. I saw um, some plans that were a little unclear to me what they were proposing, but... <laughs> Um, <laughs> we've been there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, if you were to just rotate that greenhouse number four, you would still have the sides that would be within the setbacks. And the other thing that we're proposing is cedar fence all around the site. I believe before it was just going to be chain link where a butters could see inside and, um, everything would be visible, which doesn't make sense to me. So I think the cedar fence will really do a good job of concealing um, that greenhouse. Though my read of the plan says the cedar would be, the cedar fence would be on three sides, um, north, east and west and chain link to the south. Right, that's because all of the existing, if you um, scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to see the existing structures that would not be part of the growing facility. So that yeah. are in there. Um, yeah. So so none of that side should be visible from Christian Lane. Sure, sure, understood. Okay. I think we should point out to you that in the past we've interpreted the setbacks, the wording in the bylaw is that the setback is to the marijuana establishment. And our interpretation has been that establishment includes includes the security fence. So um, I think you're asking for a setback waiver for essentially to have no setbacks at all on, on that definition. Okay, my understanding was it was just the structures and typically a fence is not considered a structure. Well, in this case, because it's mandated as a part of the, because security is an essential part of the, of the concert CCC requirements and because typically it's in, in, involved with security cameras and uh, et cetera, we've interpreted it that way. Um, and I think we should, just so you know, and we also would normally require plantings on the outside of a fence that massive, which this does not allow for. Okay. I'm curious how you, how wide the difference is, the separation between the security fence and that greenhouse on the Western side and back. It doesn't look like there's room to get a, a snowplow or a lawnmower or even a repair facility in there. Yeah, there's there's six feet between the fence and the edge of the greenhouse. So, so what would you what do you do about snow? We would probably shovel. Okay. Well, I think um, probably the, the best thing to do at this point is. Um, think about some of the stuff and go ahead and set the public hearing for the next normal meeting and um, we'll see what happens with the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing. There, there is one other item I'd like to bring up for Julie um, and also see what my colleagues on the board think about this. So of course, at the, at the um, public meeting, you had Julie in town offices, uh, certainly odor control, not, no surprise was like a big theme, right? Um, in your current plan, you talk about this, you know, you know, interesting and 
supposedly effective method of, um, let's just say, you know, infusing this sort of chemical, in theory, safe chemical fog into the exhaust and so on and so forth. I will confess my own personal reaction when first reading this. You know, of course, there are the uh, assertions from the your vendor, Cannabusters, that, you know, all of this is safe. I looked at the list of ingredients and, you know, there's all kinds of stuff there that, you know, could in theory support the claim that, oh, don't worry about a thing here. This is completely safe. And, um, you know, it'll take care of the odor. And yet, and again, this is just like my first reaction. And this is not the public hearing, right? This is like sharing with you, maybe asking questions or making a comment on your site plan. That um, I had a little, you know, it gave me pause, right? That, okay, so now, I mean, these are valuable farming, farm soils. There's going to be some vapor, you know, chemical infused vapor. Supposedly, you know, let's suppose you're doing great with odor control, but how are people going to feel like, is this vapor going to, you know, spread? Is it going to, you know, there's salt. That is that over time going to get into the soils. Salt in soil is not good for plants, you know. Obviously, I'm not a not a science it, chemistry you know person about all of this, but I'm kind of giving you like one reaction, like like we get we've we've done this before with other operators where they talk about you know filters, right, charcoal based filters and that sort of thing, and you know, we've approved that, and I think it's also been said it even came up in the in the town meeting in the in the in the public meeting that um, here in Waitley, we've approved a number of these cannabis operations and yet virtually none of them have yet gotten into operation such that we have any real experience with odor control and all of that. We continue to fly a little bit blind. We continue to fly a little bit based on sort of hope that the, the odor control plans presented to us by the various cultivation operators are really going to be effective and not create problems. And now you're coming to the table with, you know, a very new and different one that adds this other unknown twist, unknown to us. And so I just could imagine citizens of the town, like, I don't, you know, raising all kinds of objections, like based on lack of knowledge, right? What is this vapor? Where is it going? How, you know, so maybe to turn this into a form of a question, like, have you thought seriously about this? Like, is there a particular reason why you're maybe not going with a, like with at least filters, we have the intuition that you're, you're pulling stuff that you don't want to release. You're trapping it and not releasing it. Now you're talking about a different scheme where you're pushing something new, supposedly odor-free, out into the, you know, ambient environment. And I just wonder if you might be creating more troubles for yourself and getting this approved than you really want to. So I just want to see if you could comment on your choice of this versus filters and your reactions to anything I've said, which may admittedly be just a kind of a gut level somewhat ignorant, somewhat maybe based in fear reaction. Yeah, sure. So if the board has a specific solution that they are comfortable with, we're open to using that. But this is the most effective solution that's being used in the cannabis market today, as far as complete odor control. And I included the um, material sheet and the ingredients and the testing in our application. So people can see exactly what the ingredients are, which you talked about, Brant. Um, when the representative of um, 
canabusters, which is the solution that's used. When he does his demonstration, he sprays the solution directly in his mouth. It's, it's very, very safe. Um, and I will invite him onto the public hearing so he can speak specifically more to it. But I really feel this is the best solution um, and the safest and the most effective. So I'm, I'm happy to get into it more when he's here to, to talk about it in detail and um, talk about it more with the abutters and the okay. public. Julie, one thing that would be helpful if you can, if he could provide examples of other communities that, or other facilities, and especially ones in our climate, because I have a little dubious about how this is going to work when it's 20 below. But um, That's a good okay. point. I'll do that, Judy. And, Thank and you. The big problem we have is that so far we have zero experience with anything. So it's hard for us to... Uh, give you any advice on what we think would work right yeah, and, I mean, and to that i'll just say you know i know you guys have conditioned before that you would come and do a check once a year um i will be very actively involved in this site every day and and i hope that we have a relationship where we can make adjustments as needed and, and put a more effective solution in if, if for some reason it's not working you know maybe i'll offer a comment that's somewhat in your favor and, and also use that as a way of clarifying my understanding about your plan. So um, all the, of course, the cultivation work is going on within this enclosed area that's towards the southern end of this long rectangular lot. Am I correct so far? Correct. And then to the north of the uh, fenced in area, that's regular, that's the, the current landowners, the Hikoskis are gonna to continue to do regular farming on that land as that's they right. always have. Yep. And so in some sense, um, if this, you know, vapor uh, turned out to over time, you know, impregnate soils and, um, you know, have an adverse effect on the soil's ability to grow crops, then they would in some sense be the first victims along with either of the, you know, abutters that are also doing cultivation. So you might say they have an incentive to not have, a, you know, bad vapors <laughs> spewing onto their farmland. Right. They would never choose something that would be, or they would never agree to implement something that would be harmful to their business. Okay. There's, I guess the only other thing was, this was the first time, again, to my other board members think, the first time I was actually gratified to see it, though I have yet to read it word for word, you had your entire site security plan. Um, and interestingly, at least again, correct me if I'm wrong, fellow board members, it seemed like most of the other applicants basically didn't give us their site security plans, you know, because they wanted to, you know, protect the confidentiality of those plans. They shared them in detail with uh, the Waitley police chief or police department from whom we then got some, um, you know, endorsement of their quality and sufficiency. Um, so that was sort of just another thing that was like, like, huh, I don't know what the best practice is in terms of putting these um, security plans into the public is now that this is this security plan is posted on the Waitley town website. Uh, are the security cameras posted? I didn't think they were. Because we, the security plan itself has been an open book, but just the camera locations have been. Is that uh, so? Is it really just yeah. the locations and typically? That, yeah. Okay. So, Julie, you don't have the camera locations on there, do you? You do. I do. I do because the bylaw had asked for it, so I wanted to be transparent and mm -hmm. include everything. Yeah. Well, maybe, 
So should we suggest that she sends like an updated version without the camera? It's already in the code? public record. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is a public record now. Well, you could always talk to the, if, if it comes to it, you could always talk to the police and, and uh, change them so that they're not obvious. I don't think that's a, a, a real problem at this point. I don't think it's a problem anyway. People have interpreted it that way, but I'm not sure that it is. All right. Um, does anyone want to move that we tentatively schedule a public hearing for, what's the date on that? It looks like it would be the 30th of November. Right. Okay. So I will move that we schedule a public hearing for site plan review of the marijuana cultivation facility at 149 Christian Lane for Tuesday, uh, the 30th of November, starting at 5.15 PM. And depending upon? Conditional on their receiving a variance at the, at the upcoming CBA meeting. Okay, do I have a second? A second. Can it go, Tom? I talked over you, Tom. Tom, Tom also seconded it. So we'll have a roll call. Don, yes. Judy? Yes. Brent? Yes. Tom? Yes. Okay, and Sarah's recused. So, um, motion carries. Um, and thank you very much, Julie. And hopefully, we'll see you on the 30th. Great. Thank you all very much. Have a good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. All right. So, I still have my. Agenda, so Brent? Uh, yeah, sorry. I was just making a note in the folder so that we don't forget what we do on the 30th. Okay, so the next item of business is oh, We the, probably should have set a time, 5.15. I said 5.15, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep, so I'm gonna, I always, when we do this for future meetings, I drop a text file in the OneDrive meeting folder for that meeting with any things that we've scheduled for that particular meeting as a note to ourselves. Um, so the next item of business tonight is the a &R application for near Valeri and Nancy Ashman residents. All right. And do we have somebody presenting that? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Sure. Let's see if I can get my... You're now muted, but, and you're still invisible. <laughs> you know, it was just a... <laughs> All right, come on. Okay. Okay, I'll just do it. No video. Uh, my name is Brian Frenetovich. I'm a professional land surveyor for Northeast Survey Consultants. Um, we were hired by the uh, Department of Agricultural Resources to do a agricultural preservation plan, uh, preservation restriction plan. Um, in that process, um, what they what the what they've been doing now is the portion of land that is unrestricted that doesn't get the restriction. They want to see that it can stand alone as a conforming building lot. And the idea is that if they were to ever go and buy out, buy outright the land that they've taken a restriction on, that they wouldn't cause any problems with the unrestricted land, um, you know, then be, being in a non-conforming lot. 
So in this case, um, I don't know if you if you have the plan in front of you. Yeah, I brought it up. Oh, great. Okay. Um, in this case, you've got uh, this is Larry and Nancy Ashman's. They have a, a house lot. It is uh, one sixty three Long Plain Road. Um, at first, they just wanted to kind of straighten out the line between them and the field. Um, but then it ended up uh, being good because one of the house corners was about three quarters of a foot too close to the existing line. Um, so what we're proposing here is adding a, the small triangle you see that's parcel A. Um, Can you zoom in on that? Uh -huh. I'm going in now. So that would be this jog here? Yes, that small triangle yep. uh, just north of the house, exactly. Uh, so right now that's part of the large lot, which is um, 13010. Um, so we're proposing taking that small sliver and adding it to 130101, which is the house lot. Um, which will then bring it into conformance with current zoning. So it'll, it didn't need any uh, frontage or area, but it just needed a little bit of a side yard setback um, to give it clearance from the house there. Um, I'm sorry, I just got a little confused. I'm looking at this diagram. So is the triangle part of the lot with this hatched? And it's going to be added to the house lot, or it's going to be taken away from the house lot. Added to the right. park. Lot, lot. Added. Okay, that makes sense. That makes this side lot right here legal. Yep, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um. This. Um. This house does have public water. Um. So. So in this case, um, the side and rear setbacks are twenty feet. Uh, the front was 50. Uh, the minimum frontage was 175, which it already had that. So now it's it's getting another 20 feet of frontage. And then uh, 40,000 feet was the minimum area, which it had, had already had 56,000. So now it's getting a little bit more. Um, so it exceeds um, all the so area, frontage, and all the setbacks now. And uh, seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's about it. I move we accept the A and R as drawn. I'll second, second that. I'll third it. All right, roll call. Donald, yes. Sarah, I. Judy, yes. Brent, yes. Okay, the motion passes. Unanimous. Yes. Great, thank you. So um, the the plan is in the town office, is that correct, Brian? Yes. Okay, because the actual plan, what we'll have to do is sign it. And uh, when we get it signed, I'll get in touch with you and we'll give you one copy and the original Mylar. We'll keep copies for ourselves. Perfect, yeah. If you, if you just let us know, we can come and uh, pick it up. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Hey, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, how are you doing? On the men, much better. Oh, good. good. Tom, meet Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Tom. It's nice to meet you. I'm the new community development person for Waitley. Welcome. Late welcome. Thank you. Are you related to Mike Davis? I'm sorry. Are you related to Mike Davis? Maybe very, very distantly, but not to my knowledge. <laughs> well, one of the librarians at, at UMass uh, was Mike Davis, and he had a daughter named Hannah. I've never met her. No kidding. That's so funny. Yeah, there are a lot of Hannah Davises out there. I'm one of many. <laughs> Don, can you put the document down? Oh, yeah. Hey. Hannah, that was far and away the easiest A&R we have ever done. That's your perfect introduction. 
<laughs> yeah, they're That's all like, great. <laughs> I made sure to do a lot of reading up on it. So I'm glad it was really nice and simple. <laughs> well, basically, they're just so that um, you can transfer land to, to take, take a little bit off of one or onto another, um, or to combine two lots into one. I don't think you can you can separate those lots with an AR, can you, Judy? Not sure what you mean by separate. Well, like if you want to break your, yeah, I guess you can. If, you, if you've got two house lots or one big house lot that has excess, you can break it into two, right? Sure. Yeah. As long as you have the frontage. Right. Actually, you don't even need the frontage because it doesn't have to be a buildable lot, but um, it does have to be on a public way. It doesn't do a lot of good for you if, unless it has the frontage, but you can do it. And we do have a stamp that we put on everyone saying that we are not certifying that this both lots are buildable. All right. Brent, on you again. In terms of the next thing on our agenda is approval of minutes. And do Mary we have did any send us some. There was something I saw an email from Mary earlier tonight. Well, you have the ones I did too, and I had no problems with your changes, Brent. Ah, so all right. So it seems like those should are the we minutes. Create a clean version of those minutes. Well, and maybe other people have comments. Yeah. Maybe we'll bring them up. Can you remind me? I can share screen if- It's the 20, 28th of September. The 28th, let me just look. Yeah. Did anybody read Mary's message? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we have the minutes for the June 29th as well as the minutes spreadsheet showing status. Um, it sounds like there's Four sets outstanding. Oh, she's giving us deadlines. Okay, two more sets by the 30th, two more sets by the 6th, two more sets, I'm sorry, three more sets by the 6th, three more sets by, sets by the 13th, and tonight's by the 20th. Go, Mary. Okay. Except she never showed tonight, so I'm not sure. I don't. I still don't know whether it's legal to for somebody to do minutes for meetings they're not yeah. attending. Maybe Hannah would be nice enough to do them. I can do them if need be. Yeah, Hannah, if you would do them and then just send them out and we can, if there's anything you missed, we could probably cover it. That work, everybody? Sure. Sure. So what is the group? I put up the minutes that I copy edited from uh, for September 28th. I can simply accept all the changes if, since, uh, since Judy looked at all of these and was happy with them. I can just do that and then we can see if anyone has any other changes. Does, does, does that meet the boards? Um, are you good with that? Yeah, I'm already good with them too. I, I think if we're happy with Judy's comments and I think we, I am, um, I'm good with it. Okay. So I just did an accept. I'll get rid of this comment or... Uh, Make the comment. All right. So these would be the final. Oh, we never found out. Does anyone know? Do we have any idea like when they September? Why don't you just, why don't you just delete the sentence? Okay. Just, just like that. <laughs> Good solution. Yeah. Okay. With that. I mean, now it can be assumed that the meeting did adjourn. Yes, I think that's a fair statement. <laughs> um, 
unless we just simply, well, all right, no, this is good. All right, and we have, there is one document reviewed. All right, so I will save this and rename it in the OneDrive folder to just say well, final or final approved. So, so we'll say- Is Sarah gone? Minutes. Oh, it's Sarah gone. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a, um, I'll move that we accept the minutes as presented or amended. I'll second that. Any further comments? Judy? Aye. Don, aye. Brent? Aye. Tom? Aye. And we'll double check with uh, Sarah, she comes back, but not something she's done with. So having created final minutes, what's the next step to get them posted? Is there an action for me here? If you could send them to, I don't know which Amy, um, actually, if, if, if Hannah's now on overdrive, she could send them to check whether it's Amy, which Amy gets, would post them on the website. Is, do you know if it's town clerk or the administrative assistant? No, I don't. Okay. Um, Actually, yeah, do you, sure. you might, you probably should have a login to the web page. You could do it. Yeah, um, possibly. I, uh, I'm i not sure. I can, the do, top I, can, I can do it, but she needs okay. to have them in, on her files anyway, I think. It's, there's, okay. She needs some for the files and to put up on the web page. I right. skimmed Mary's minutes very quickly and didn't see anything, but they're fairly detailed and as Mary's always are. So it right. might be. And that was for June 29th. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put those in the meeting folder for June 29th. I assume, Hannah, you've sort of figured out like, you know, how to navigate a little bit of the folder structure on OneDrive and there's this whole meetings tree and. I have, yeah, it's pretty intuitive. I'm not sure what happened with the glitch earlier, but uh, I'm, the folders are very well labeled. <laughs> All right, you can say that. Thank you, I'll just. Take that as a thank you. Okay. Um, Sarah, did you um, want to vote A on the meeting minutes? I will. Sorry, I didn't realize how dead my laptop was. Well, you're now showing us Brian, so. Oh, I really lost myself. So, so regarding the minutes for the meeting on June 29th, Judy, I mean, do we just want to spend a couple of minutes skimming them tonight and then voting on them? I'd rather take some time and do it okay. next time myself. I mean, it's a, it's a blessedly short meeting, so we probably have time, but um, it seems like a waste of time to spend reading. <laughs> I agree. All right, so we'll make a note let me make a note for our next meeting to vote on the minutes of June 29th. I'd like to return to the 149 Christian line. I didn't know if the planning board wanted to take a position on the variance or not. The setbacks. Um, the setbacks. I personally am opposed to it. Um, there's no room for screening for all the all the uh, uncertainty about the odor controls that Brent went into so eloquently before. At, at a minimum, I think we should point out to the plant, to the ZBA that we enforce it. We have interpreted the setback to apply to 
to the security fence as well as the buildings. Um, I think it's a very, there are houses very close. I mean, they don't even meet the standard setbacks, let alone, let alone the marijuana setbacks. Yeah. Essentially that will have no setbacks at all. I'm not sure how Scott can get to his land in back because it's so close. I mean, he's gonna to have to go onto somebody else's land, but that's his problem. So, so if they're required by regulation, what, what choice do we have but to point out that it's not, it's not, not um, conforming to the regulation? Well, it's not our call whether they get a variance or not. That's up to the ZBA. Right, so we would, we would be make, stating an opinion about it for them to take into consideration? Yeah. You don't have to, if, if the board doesn't want to do it, I'll write something personally and make clear it's just my opinion. Well, I, I do feel like at least having this discussion now um, and possibly taking a position on it. And just to clarify, Judy, you're suggesting that we consider taking a position on the, on the East and West setbacks with respect to the ZBA, meaning we would communicate as the planning board to the ZBA, for example, our, our opinion or position on whether a waiver, a setback waiver should be granted by them is, have I stated that right? Yeah, I, we would make it clear that it's obviously their responsibility and jurisdiction. Yeah. But we would, you know, we've been involved in these discussions. We, right. they normally take, take our interpretation of bylaws heavily into account. So the right. definition of what's an establishment, I think is something quite distinct that they should point out. The fact that we would normally require screening on a big fence like that. Right. And there's no ability to do that. Yeah. Um, and we've set a precedent. Like a, it's gonna look like a Ford. <laughs> so it seems like the issue here is, I mean, in a way, one, one can say the bylaws are the bylaws and we've interpreted them consistently here to four. We've done this for DMCTC. Um, well, I, I can't remember whether LaSalle ever came to a public hearing. Did, did we get through a public hearing with LaSalle? Oh yeah, we yeah. approved the pipeline. By okay. the way, that's that deal has fallen through. Hmm. They've, they've withdrawn. Okay, okay. Um, but certainly with the MCTC, uh, I think there is at least one other where we've been quite consistent in taking a position around the setbacks. Uh, and so what's the argument? I mean, how could we as a planning board possibly decide to treat this particular one differently? I don't That's see. That's my point. Yeah. Well, it's not, if they grant the variance, then the, the issue of the setback disappears, I think we would still presumably have the ability to require plantings. And I'm not quite sure how that works. Right. Um, but we wouldn't have the ability to require, to require a setback. So the ZBA could, you might say, tie our hands or take that issue off the table for us. They are the arbiters of the bylaw. They yeah. they are they are the interpreters of the bylaw. Okay. Okay. I mean, in, if where there's any question of legality or. Right. But if if they grant the variance, it, and that precludes our ability to require screening because there's no place to put screening. Well, I don't know that. 
Was it I don't, we, we should have the right to impose screening. I don't know how that would work. Um, and maybe that's, maybe that's one thing I would like to point out to them. That, that I think that should be pointed out to them. Yeah. Because that, that is our purview, the screening. Yeah. So the two things that I the two things that I think would be new to them are the screening and the the definition of establishment. The rest of it they know, but it probably wouldn't hurt for us to opine. I mean, it feels we, wise we, to me to do this, to, to make this a, an official communication. I would, because I'm I, sort of looking ahead, it would feel to me like we would be hard pressed as a planning board to grant approval to the site plan. Well, not necessarily. If, if, they, if, they, if they turn it over, if they grant the variance, then we, we live with the variance. Yeah. I mean, I if we, really we take really we take letters from the historical commission and, and encourage them from the from other boards mm -hmm. in developing our conditions and and circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not certainly not a requirement, and I'm quite happy to write a letter myself. I just right. occurred to me that maybe people would feel as I did, and. Uh, and I think it's only fair to the applicant that they know um, the, the sentiment of the board and what may be coming down the road with screening. Right, we pretty much... That, that they're not out of the woods yet with the screening, with the variance. Yeah, I, mean, I did mention it, but, but this would certainly give it more, more weight. I think those are the three issues. So there's the issue of... Um, how we've interpreted the bylaws for other marijuana facilities uh, with respect to setbacks and you know, what constitutes the facility. There's the issue of screening in this, of, of the fact that we've required landscape screening beyond the fences, and that would be hard to do or, or the applicant would have to be able to set the fences such that they could provide adequate screening entirely within their property lines. And even then that seems a little iffy because plants grow and then they start to extend over the property line. I'm not real concerned about that because the, the, the board fence they're gonna put up to me is plenty of screening. The thing that well, I... That I do yeah. am concerned okay. about is the fact that we've already approved one site plan with no setback for the security fence. So that I don't know if that's on, on public record or not, but it, it's been approved. And then Wait, was, I'm sorry, you, no setback for the security fence? Right. Where? Same same place. When the first one we approved was never no, got they they reconfigured it so they had the setback to the fence. That's why they moved the, they had to move the, the greenhouses because we wanted the setback to the fence. I did, it was, okay, I'll have to look at it again, but. So this is the urban grown application you're referring yeah. to? Right. Okay. No, we did, that's, I mentioned that when we brought it up when with DMCTC. Yeah. I think but we feel like me, this. It feels to me like DMCTC, you know, in my short tenure here is, is sort of my my canonical model of one uh, you know, one of these operations where they they've adjusted and they've met all the requirements and we we set fencing requirements, we set perimeter landscaping requirements, and we did all of that. And all of that would seemingly get thrown away to for us to approve this particular plan. The screening done, it's not that the fence wouldn't, the fence obviously would hide the facility. It's that 
you need to screen the fence from the abutters, I think it's really gonna look awful. And. Well, I mean, we've got them all over town. I, I've never, you know, how, how many board fences are there? As tall as this, all the way around a, a gigantic parcel. Better than a French. Well, I'm, I just don't find them offensive, but that's a personal opinion. Well, I hear that point, and yet we did this for we did this for DMCTC re required this landscaping around the fencing, and we that imposes costs on them. And again, it seems like we have to be consistent with all applicants. We required it for the solar facilities. We don't ne didn't necessarily get it, but we required it. Yeah. I think. I think we need to be consistent from yeah. applicant to applicant. I'll buy that. So now I have a process question. If we're going to send a letter about this to the ZBA, do we need to literally in this tonight's public meeting draft that to meet the requirements of open meeting or can we agree on the, the key um, elements of this and then Judy can draft it outside of the meeting? I'm assuming the latter. Okay. All right. So, Brant, Brant, you listed the three um, uh, elements very clearly. I think we could vote on those three elements and Judy works off of that. All right. So maybe I should, um, given that, why don't I just, for the, thank you. Of course, I'll take, that's nice that you said that, Tom, and now can I remember them all? Let me, let me just create another well, quick Well, the first moment, is the definition of establishment. The second is the ability to screen. screen. Well, I think uh, we all agree on the basic content. And with other boards I've been on at UMass, um, we, we send around an email saying, is this, does everybody agree with this? And so if, as long as we don't get comments, or as long as we don't get any disagreements, then I think it's perfectly legal. So issue one is that the East and West um, um, fence lines don't meet the setbacks. No, they do need a setback. They, they currently don't currently meet setbacks. Don't meet it. I thought you said need. Yeah, yeah don't, don't currently meet setbacks. Um, um, if a waiver were granted, then it would be difficult for the planning board to um, require um, landscape screening of the fence lines as we have done with other cultivation facilities. Right. Do I don't think you need to go into that in great detail, but I mean, um, this is just an internal note. And then, yeah. yeah. And so the other, the, the other issue is the definition of marijuana establishment applying to the fence. To find marijuana, marijuana, marijuana facility to include the security fence. And I'm not sure what the third issue was. So. Well, that was, well, that was, I guess, I wrote, first of all, the uh, east and west fence lines don't currently meet setbacks, which is also related to the fact of how we've defined the marijuana facility to include the security fences. So really those two points are related. Okay, well, the first one is the, re is the definition issue for which the variance is being applied. So I think this, we kind of assume that, but anyway, okay. I think I've got it. Okay. And it's in a little text note in the OneDrive for, the, for tonight's meeting. All right. 
So I'll move that. But should we, I, uh, the other issue I think is that it's a fairly dense, that residential properties are very close. Okay. Um, and I don't know if I want to mention the uncertainty about the fact that we don't have any experience with odor control yet. Well, that's, is that a ZBA issue? Well, it's control? partly a setback issue, I think. Isn't that one reason you want the setbacks? Well, I think they're gonna have bigger problems with their odor control plan than the difference between, you know, then 50 okay. feet. Fine. And that, well, okay. So do we need a formal vote on this? Well, I think we did. Okay. So we're- I wanted to send it and then you just are clarifying the points. Okay. So we're, we've, so the, the vote is to send um, a position statement to the historic uh, to the ZBA regarding the site plan waiver the waiver request for uh, associated with the okay. site plan at 149 Christian Lane. Yeah, I think it should be more concerns rather than. Okay, I, I think concerns would tone it down a little. Okay. All right, so, I, so I've made that motion. And we voted on it, but didn't we? Okay. Did we? Yeah. I'll second it anyway. Let's make sure that it's been seconded and I'm just gonna vote yes, just because. Yes. Yes. So yes. Yeah. Recused. Recused, all right, very I'm, good. I'm voted already. All right, uh, let's see. So that's, that's my majority vote. I do have a, on the same subject, though not with respect to the ZBA. Um, this point about their odor control, and and this is it, it's sort of an open question. Like, I could imagine at an actual public hearing, if this is their odor control, if this remains their odor control plan, obviously I, I keep an open mind because I would want to hear what happens in a public hearing and I could be convinced otherwise. But um, we as members of the planning board can individually decide whether to vote for or against approving a site plan. Is that correct? You know, if I were, to, if I felt during a planning a, a, at the conclusion of a public hearing that this particular odor control provision, you know, I, I well, I, I guess I wouldn't approve it, but we would have to send them back to do a new odor control plan. Is I, I guess I'm trying to understand how this would go. I've had come to the conclusion that we can't reject or fail to approve. We can set conditions, and we can, you know, def, you know, defer um, discussion to a future meeting. But it seemed like we can't outright disapprove of a site plan unless it's clearly in violation of a bylaw. Am I understanding this right? Did somebody school me here? Yeah, you, that's for Hannah's benefit. I think that's correct. Um, a special permit can be denied. A site plan cannot be denied unless it's in violation of a bylaw. We can condition it, but we can't condition it to the point that it becomes uneconomical. Okay. We can hire an a consultant. And in this case, that might be something at the, at the applicant's expense. Okay. So we could hire an engineer or maybe the expert that DMCTC brought or somebody like that. Um, on the planners listserv, they were asking for recommendations of, of uh, marijuana odor control engineering experts. And I don't, all the ones that came up were in the Eastern part of the state, but there okay. weren't many. But that's, that's something we could do and we might seriously wanna think about it. Okay. 
Um, so could one And while I think of it, Hannah, right. remind me to tell you about the planner's listserv. <laughs> okay. So we could potentially, if it came to this, again, I wanna reiterate that I'm trying to be careful about keeping an open mind here. So I'm just doing a thought experiment. Um, one could take a plan like this and they've, you know, they've said they're gonna use technology A for odor control. And on the basis of a public hearing, we become convinced that um, that's not a good technology. And we've previously approved, you know, technology B used at some other facility in town. And we could condition approval of the site plan on their using technology B instead of technology A. Is that a, a way to do this? Or would we have to basically somehow send them back to the drawing board to come back to another public, uh, public meeting? Like I said, I'm just trying to understand, like, if you can't say, if you can't deny a site plan, but you can establish conditions, um, can one establish conditions that would basically make the kind of change I'm suggesting? Yes, we've we've done that with a call that that the condition being that the odor be not present at X number of feet from the building. Okay. And I can tell you right now that the uh, place down on the traffic circle in Northampton, when you pull into the driving the parking lot, and the door has just been opened, you can smell it. Yeah. So uh, whatever they, they've got there is fairly effective, but certainly would not pass our regulations. Okay. Fran, I think we could tell them, look, we want you to use this other system, but we would have to have a good solid justification for picking one over the other. Mm. Well, uh, and, we I mean, up. all of this can, I wasn't quite done, Don, I'm sorry. I mean, essentially, all of this is is we're, these are legal issues we're we're dealing with, obviously. Right. right. So, so we need to be able to justify not just logically but practically what we're doing. So, if we really felt like that, I think we would need to hire an expert and have, have some justification. But that's mm -hmm. certainly easily done. Right. Right. I mean, well, it's possible, easily. I'm not sure how right. easy, but I'm sure it's doable. Okay. The other thing that's transpired is that at a couple of meetings, I've said, where can we do this? And a couple of people said, there's a lot of growing going on right now. I can give you the address of somebody. So maybe I should um, make a couple calls and see if there's someplace we can go and actually see what it's like, smell what it's like. Yeah. So I'll, I will do that research this week. That'd be great. I mean, as I, I was just imagining, you know, maybe it's, I've been reading too many articles about citizens storming school committee meetings and yelling at public officials, but I was sort of imagining a citizen uprising at a planning board meeting, like this thing is gonna spray these, you know, vapors. Yeah, well. and, and and then we're like, well, we're going to approve it. <laughs> well, I think we're quite entitled to ask somebody to prove it to us. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is, um, and, and well, never mind. But I, I do think we've got to. We don't probably use engineers or outside consultants as much as we should be. Okay. Can we afford that in this town? The applicant pays. Oh, the applicant pays. I see. Okay. Yeah, we've That's only some... really complicated places so far. Okay. Yeah. I will say this is the first one of these that I looked at. And like I said, like I've given it one read through and I looked at the list of ingredients and, but I, I, I just, it was very different. And of course the vendor is gonna say, this is perfectly safe. And yes, I can spray it right into my mouth, you know. Uh, and yet I can also imagine 
a lot, you know, deep concern about what the long-term environmental impact might be. Well, one, one thing that you probably aren't aware of is the well pollution in that part of town. And they're going to be using water from the well. I don't think that anybody's going to be spraying that in their mouth. <laughs> I, in fact, I don't know if that's something the applicants are aware of because they're, they're really going to have to filter that water if it's to be used at all. And that's, that's another issue to take up if and when we see the site plan. Okay. I think we're ahead of ourselves. I, right. I would be very surprised if they got this variance. But right. You never know. And there is public water available there. They haven't asked for it. They need to, then they need permission from the water department and just, right. just all of that. Yeah. The water department lives there. <laughs> that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be interesting. I was thinking that it was the, that's the Wayne Hatkoski. Yep. Yeah, so your point about getting ahead of ourselves is well taken. It's just like I could sort of see this coming up and, and I wanted to explore it with this group in a little bit. Well, it's, it's true on any issue, I think, that where we don't understand something, we should be. Drainage, I mean, we have Don's expertise and we have Tom's biology expertise, but... Mm -hmm. And brass acquisitive of mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for all that's worth in this case. Well, um, I should set up the Zoom meeting. Stuff that the rest of us don't at times. One Can thing I ask a I... question on, on, on an unrelated topic. Certainly. What, what has become of the t shirt business on Route 5 in the, uh, in the old schoolhouse? I don't know. They put the new roof on. Is it still a viable project? It looks empty. I don't know. We spent a lot of time on that project. Yeah. Was, that was the printing operation. Is that right, Tom? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But I haven't seen much going on there. No. I'll hmm. stop it next time I take Route 5 and see what's going on. There's nothing going on. That's, that's But the vape shop is empty. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's see. The other thing that's been uh, on my mind, I mean, are we done with this topic of the agenda after approval of minutes just says additional items not anticipated? And without extending this meeting beyond people's patience, the series of messages around the defect at the, the last... Oh. You know, like, can we talk about that? Some of that went a little bit over my head. I apologize. Like, what do we have to do? We don't have to do anything. Yay. Um, I talked to Amy Schrader this morning. For the past bylaw, for the bylaw vote at town meeting, they have to post, they have to put a legal ad in the paper, which they have done, or they send it to be published anyway. I don't. And who's the they? Amy, the town clerk. The town, okay. I, I tried to see if it would, could be Amy 1 and Amy 2, but I guess it's Amy S and Amy L. Um, Amy Trader. Um, has sent the legal ad in. She's posted it at town hall, at town offices. And if nobody complains that they have been uninformed within 21 days, they file, they send this back to the AG's department and they can grant a waiver of the requirement. The requirement we took out, to save money, we took out the phrase that plans and maps are available in town offices. And that's the one that should have been there, evidently. Okay. 
I tried to see if we could do the same process for the Wendelowski one and not pass it over at town meeting. Um, and they, the former and current town clerk were very unhappy with that. Um, Amy didn't want to, they, they really thought that they would probably give us the waiver the first time. Which just, a, you know, they've done their polite slap on the wrist. But they thought if we came back instantly with the same thing again, they would not be happy with us. And nobody wants the attorney general's office to be unhappy with you. In addition to which the, the legal ad evidently cost $800. Which was a lot. <laughs> they had to publish the whole notice from the attorney general, I guess. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Could we make a much shorter uh, public announcement? Because we don't need all the information. We just need to put a bit of general information in there where it's available. I don't think you would get Amy and Lynn to agree to that. And I suspect if they won't agree to it, I, that Brian wouldn't. And that, that really does put them in a tough situation. So I said, well, maybe we could do a, a, another special town meeting quickly. And nobody really wanted to do a special town meeting for a zoning issue. So I don't know. I don't, maybe there'll be a town meeting in January. Sometimes there is, January, February. Well, this is a piece of land that's basically landlocked, right? It's no, a, it's on five and 10. Right, but it's under the bridge, isn't it? No, I don't think so. Okay, I just have under to- the bridge? No. Wasn't the, this the one we were zoning commercial? Yeah. Which is just right, yeah, down. It's just right with adjacent to the other ones we zoned commercial. Yeah. All right. So there's nothing. So this is something being worked on by the town clerk. Yeah, so we don't actually... have to do anything um, okay. except profusely apologize to Gary Wendelowski. Okay. Mark. Mark, okay, sorry. No. He just you. lost his father, Tony. Oh. Well, I guess so does, do, it... does this mean that the worst case, if it doesn't happen at the, no, at the upcoming, the November, special town meeting that it might not happen until next April or May or June? Yeah, that's worst case. Okay. And practically, I doubt that it makes that much difference. Because nobody's but. going to chase after him about zoning violations in, his, in the current situation. Well, I don't think that one is still ag. That one has never been built on. I, see. I think what okay. he would like to do is sell it as a commercial lot. Okay. Or I'm not sure what else Mark does, but maybe he wants to use it as commercial property, but is doing, yeah. going about it a little differently than the one we already did. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I think I got my answer satisfactorily answered you know thanks for bringing that up i meant to explain that All Try right. to. okay so i think that's it are there any other items not anticipated i would accept a motion to adjourn i would move. second one <laughs> All right, so Judy moved it. I said, <laughs> Well, I was a little distracted. A wet cat just came and clawed my leg. <laughs> I think we. All right. You're going to call for a vote? 
I, I haven't heard the motion yet. I just asked for oh. one. You seconded, but nobody made one. Judy, Judy moved it. Oh, okay. Judy moved. Thompson, or Brent seconded. Yeah. Uh, Judy. Aye. Don, aye. Brent? Aye. Sarah? Yes. Tom, yes. Yes. That's, and it's six, nine, nine, eight, 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 eight. That's great. This meeting is adjourned. Okay. Good night, everybody. On. So next time on everybody. November 30th. Happy Halloween. All right. Enjoy all. Bye for Bye, now. Everyone. Have a nice evening. All right. You see too. you all. Thank you. Good night.